Hello everybody, my name is Dalton Nelson, and today I'd like to give my thoughts on the game I just beat. That game being Fear 2 Project Origin on the PC. Fear 2 is a first-person shooter developed by Monolith Productions and published by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. Last year when I played 2005's Fear, I thought it was a decent horror-themed shooter with great lighting, intelligently designed AI, and well-thought-out level design. I didn't think it was great. Even after a second playthrough, I found that the constant walking through empty hallways and inconsistency of the horror weren't very engaging, as well as things like the story and environments being a little subpar, which is why I was hoping that Fear 2 here would bring better horror, better environments, and a better pace to the franchise while also keeping what I liked the most from its predecessor. But after playing through it, Fear 2 seems to have gone in the opposite direction in a lot of places. First and foremost, the lighting in Fear 2 is less harsh and provides less contrast. Everything is lit a little more flat. No more industrial concrete corridors with swinging lights that you can shoot to manipulate. On occasion, the original Fear lighting rears its head, but for the most part, the lighting of the environments make Fear 2 look more like your standard 2000s FPS. This more balanced lighting does allow you to see more, like the environments, which look nice, but they also allow you to see more of the character detail, which hasn't aged well. Characters talking and moving looks pretty ugly. Most of them seems to have a single expression they use, no matter the tone of their dialogue. You also get to see the change of aesthetic monolith put Fear's world through. As I said earlier, the first Fear's world was closed in, made of concrete and office spaces. You got the feeling everything was very grounded and formal. This made the super soldiers and walking ED-209 robots stick out more. In Fear 2, however, the aesthetics are tinged with a more futuristic aesthetic, with glowing neon lights, walking power armor, and laser weapons. This even influences the game's HUD, as your character is wearing these visor glasses that show your health and ammo. Monolith also tries to utilize these glasses in a manner similar to what you would see in a Metroid Prime game, but the most you get out of this is a few water droplets and a cracked screen upon death. Sound-wise, I thought Fear 2 had its hits and misses. For the most part, the guns sounded fine, as well as the voice acting, although the mix of the game came off very poor, as some of the sounds were very quiet, especially when it came to gunshots from the enemies. A guy could be right next to you, shoot his weapon, and his shot would sound like it came from miles away. I also thought there were some rather silly sound effects that didn't fit the game's tone, like the electric shock sound effects, or the glitching that happens when you're in a horror segment. Speaking of which, the horror can also be hit or miss, like in the previous game. Some of the horror worked pretty well, especially in the beginning of the game, while other moments were marred by an overuse of effects, bad color grading, and some really amateur camera zooms that looked ugly. In terms of story, Fear 2 is not really about Project Origin like its subtitle would lead you to believe. Rather, the game tells a story about Project Harbinger, which is an initiative Armacam, the company from the last game, was taking to groom adults with telekinetic potential into what would be essentially super commandos that would lead thoughtless replica armies into war. Fear 2 starts right after the first game, where you play as Michael Beckett and his team of special ops soldiers as they try to bring Armacam executive Genevieve Aristide into protective custody as she is being hunted by a special force of Armacam private soldiers. Things get out of hand as the previous game's events catch up to our new cast, where the violent telekinetic Alma Wade is let out of her shell and a nuke hits the city trying to suppress her. Of course that doesn't work. Your whole crew is knocked out by the explosion. Genevieve brings you all to a secret Armacam lab, where most of you are injected with telekinetic juice, giving you abilities that attract Alma to you. From there, the story unfolds well enough, and the game does a really good job at foreshadowing the events that take place in the latter half of the game. Of course, it isn't flawless. For one, the supporting characters are almost non-existent. Most of them barely do anything except act as cannon fodder for Alma to slaughter. There's also some humor thrown in that doesn't really work. There is some environmental humor that works well enough, but the dialogue is just horrible whenever it tries to go for a laugh. Especially from this new Snakefist character, 
he's a worse comic relief than that fat guy from the first game. Outside of the story, there's the gameplay itself. Like everything else I've talked about thus far, there's things I like about it and things I don't. The biggest problems here stem from the enemy AI. In the first fear, the AI gave off the illusion of communicating specific strategies with each other and would flank the player and interact with the environment. They'd also show fear based on how many of them were left and how hurt they were. In Fear 2, they've pretty much lost most, if not all of that intelligence. Instead of anything I just said, Fear 2's enemies seem to just mindlessly rush you as they all spill out of the same place. They don't communicate anymore, they don't interact with the environment, they don't exhibit an illusion of fear, they're just brain-dead NPCs that fill the game's scenes, just asking to be slaughtered. This isn't fun, in fact, it's what makes the game so boring for most of its playtime. These enemies aren't even that well built. There were times where they would just stop functioning, they'd stand there and look at you until you shot them. I guess Monolith tries to alleviate this with some new enemy types, but they're not any better. The crawlers rush at you in the same manner as the soldiers, but just faster. The ghosts do damage that ignore shield protection, but they flash so much they'd kill an epileptic. And the walking power armor can be stunned by shock grenades, which you get plenty of. Most of the firefights in the game are a joke. Latter parts of Fear 2 do get harder as ammo becomes more scarce, which I like. But a majority of Fear 2 will just be spent mindlessly fighting things that offer no challenge whatsoever. Aside from that, other gameplay elements have been changed and even improved upon. Your flashlight is now limitless, which is cool I guess. Your slow-mo now makes enemies glow, which I think is also cool, but at the same time with the flat lighting and easy AI, this glow isn't warranted. Leaning around corners was taken out, which is odd. I thought that was a cool mechanic in the first game. Why was that taken out? Extensions to your health is now gone, and you carry less medkits than the last game, which may well be a byproduct of the easier enemies. Extensions to your slow-mo are still here, but they aren't hidden in the side paths like they were in Fear 1. If they were, I stopped checking about halfway through the game as I didn't find anything when I looked in the side paths. For the most part, these extensions will be put right in front of you. Fear 2 also tries to catch up to some of the modern shooters that were coming out around the time of its release. Hit markers when a shot lands, large muzzle flashes, and an emphasis on aiming down sights are worked into the shooting mechanics. There are also turret sections and quick time events that show up every so often. I think these aspects will be what age Fear 2 the most, especially since they weren't all that present in the game's predecessor. I also think the movement system, or at least the collision system that works in tandem with it, was changed up slightly as there were times where I would get stuck on small objects, or even seemingly nothing at times. Wrapping up here, I would say that Fear 2 is a mess of different aspects, some parts of the game are good, while others are pretty bad. It's definitely not as fine-tuned as its predecessor. Luckily, the game goes by pretty quickly at a decent pace, so you won't have to pay it mind for too long. I'm going to give Fear 2 a final score of a low 4 out of 10. Fear 2 ended up being pregnant with problems, from its horror to its shooting. Hopefully, this will end up giving birth to a competent child in Fear 3, but from what I've heard about that game, doesn't exactly sound like it'll be that high functioning. That concludes my review of Fear 2. If you like my reviews, you can like, comment, or subscribe. I also have social media links down in the description below, as well as a link to my online portfolio where you can see video game design works that I have done, as well as a link to my backlog profile where you can see my scores. And with that out of the way, please make sure to have a nice day.